Hey guys, this is Sylvia, and this is Draw My Life, Abuela's Kitchen Edition. This is my Abuela story. It all started many, many, many decades ago in a land called Uruapan, Michoacan, a beautiful green, lavish land, running springs, natural running springs. And this is where the man, Alberto Rico, was born, and this lady, Juana Lopez. So there was this man, Alberto Lopez, that lived in Uruapan. He traveled all the way to Purépero, Michoacán a very long time ago. And this is where he met Juana Lopez. They fell in love, married, and had children. They had many children, but the one that's important in this story is Hipólito Rico. Keep that in mind. In Purépero, Michoacán, there was another couple. Uh, Paula Contreras and Gumercindo Gonzalez. They lived in Purépero and they fell in love, they married, and had Carmen Gonzalez. So now we have Hipólito Rico, we have Carmen Gonzalez, they met, fell in love, and they had children. And this is where the story really begins. So those two characters, Hipólito Rico and Carmen González, are actually Abuela's parents. So Abuela was the firstborn, and then her brother Juan was born, and then Elisa, which we call Licho, Jesus, which we call Chuche, you know how we Mexicans name our family members. Then we have Ramon, who is still alive today, and Guadalupe, which we call Lupe. So it was three girls and three boys, and they lived in a little house in Purépero, Michoacán. Okay, back to the story. Here we have Purépero, Michoacán, and this famous street called Cinco de Mayo. On this street is where Abuela lived most of her childhood. And it was a beautiful street, houses lined up all along, short, narrow streets, you know, like all the streets in Mexico. Well, most streets in Mexico. All the neighborhood kids would gather and play. And that is where she met Abuelo, Salvador Contreras. They were about six to seven years of age and they played around like any other kid. And as time went by, we saw little hearts. And of course, you know what happens when you play and you are always hanging around each other. They fell in love. At the age of 14, they decided to get married. And so Gumercindo, which was Abuela's grandfather, bought them their first house, even on the same street, just down a little more. And that was their first home together. It was a two bedroom home, a bathroom, a kitchen, and a big backyard where they had cows and chickens and stuff like that. So. Yes, this all happened in La Calle Cinco de Mayo. So a year later, they had their first child, and her name was Estela Contreras, which is my mom, but uh, you guys have all met her. Well, if you haven't, I'll put a link down below, and you can see one of her videos. She cooks amazing as well. Then her brother was born, Salvador named after Abuelo, and of course we all changed his name and we call him Chivo. And after that we have another sibling by the name of Arnoldo, Nolo. Then we have Carmen, which we now we call Mela. Then we have Jose, Arturo, and the baby Patti, which is one year younger than me. Abuelo would travel back and forth between the United States and Mexico, working, of course, we know how that goes. So he would leave Abuela and all of the children in Purépero, Michoacán, while he would travel to the United States, work, and then come back home. So the oldest, my mom, Estela, would help Abuela take care of all the kids and the older siblings as well. Nine years later, Abuelo got his green card. Even though back in those days, you can travel in and out of the United States without a green card, eventually that took place. And so what ended up happening is, of course, they started requiring a green card. 
And so once he got his green card, Abuela got her green card, my mom, Estela, got her green card, and Chivo got his green card. So now, after that, they decided to move to Tijuana, Baja California. When they lived in Tijuana, uh, my abuelo would still continue to travel to the U.S., the border cities, uh, San Isidro and all of them, to work along with my mom and Chivo. So they were the working group and they traveled in and out of the United States through the border. There were many times when they actually traveled back to Purépero, Michoacán and lived there for, you know, short periods of time. There was one time specifically that my abuela recalls over and over again. They were traveling by bus to Purépero, Michoacán when all of a sudden a horse just jumps in front of the bus and the bus swerves and goes straight into a ditch. She says it flipped a couple of times and landed. She was noticing everybody running out, screaming, a lot of blood. Uh, there was actually only one death in the whole thing, but a lot of them were injured and a lot of people were being rushed to the hospital. But she remembers being in that bus and trying to get out, but her left leg was caught in between some of the railings of the seats. So she struggled to pull out and she couldn't. She would shake her leg, move her leg, but nothing would happen. She was the last one there and as she struggled to pull her, her leg out, she finally just yanked it and out came her leg. Of course, she scratched it all up and when she noticed, it just was horrible looking. They tried taking her to the hospital. Finally, she agreed and they took her in there. Um, they gave her the bad news that they had to amputate her leg. So at that point, she decided uh, that's not going to happen and booked it. She's done that several times before, just so you know. So she left, somehow managed to get themselves back to Purépero, Michoacán. There she went to the doctor. Um, I think it was a relative of hers who is a doctor still. And he gave her all kinds of medication to, you know, help her leg heal. And so it did. And she came back to the United States. And that's when they came to live in Redondo Beach, California. And she was happy and decided that, well, it's time to get back to work. But as she lay there, she would think about, I'm never traveling again. I am not getting in a bus again. I will never ride an airplane. So there you go, guys. You always ask, why don't we take her to Mexico? Why don't we take her here and there? Well, it's kind of hard to get Abuela out of the area for those particular reasons. We can get her in a car and take her to local places, but nowhere too far. While in the United States, in California to be specific, uh, Abuela had many, many types of jobs. Of course, the one we all would assume, yes, she was a crop picker. So she picked um, grapes, oranges, strawberries, onions, so many things. So they were all over Oceanside, uh, San Diego, Chula Vista, and all the nearby areas. I think even San Marcos. Is that even a city? I thought I heard her mention that. Oh, well. Anyway, so yes, she was all down by the border and she held many other jobs there. But crop picking was probably the one she spent the most time in. And not just her, but the rest of the family also did it. My abuela did it, my mom did it, and I think, I believe, some of my other aunts and uncles did the same thing. And so once they decided to move past all the crop picking, and of course we all know, well, maybe not, but some of you do know that she worked with Cesar Chavez. So that's where she met him. And then um, after she served her time there, pretty much, we can call it that, she moved north up the coast to Redondo Beach again. So they lived in Redondo Beach. My abuela held many jobs there as well. One of them was at this super little deli uh, in Hermosa that was called Mickey's. In that place, she, without even speaking a lick of English, she was able to read the instructions, make a pizza, make lasagna, and all these 
delicious dishes. Now, I think the key why they became so popular and so many people would order her food was because she wasn't greedy with the ingredients. Anyway, so that was one of her jobs. And she also had housekeeping jobs. She worked at the famous Portofino Inn, and uh, there she was well-liked, well-known by the owner. And the owner actually had a, a side home on the premises, and she was the one who was chosen to actually clean her um, house. So that was pretty cool. She got to see everything. Like, she trusted her with her jewelry and her money. She would just leave it around, laying around. And she knew that she could trust Abuela to come clean that house. At that point, um, one of my uncles, uh, Arnoldo, was living in Purépero at the time, working out there. And there was a freak accident, and he was run over by a tractor, and he died. So... At that point, my grandma decided to go back over there, and she lived there for a while. After that, she came to live in Tijuana, Baja California again, and I think that's where she spent a lot of time there. I remember as a teenager visiting Tijuana weekly um, to visit my abuela. So yeah, that was probably all my teenage years up until my early college years, I remember going there. Um, I'm gonna say about when my abuela was about in her 60s, early 60s, that's when they decided to come and live in Rialto, and that's where they made their final home. Ten years later, my grandfather passed away. My abuela, of course, was saddened by that, and we all were saddened by that. Um, but she had a lot of family support and uh, we were all there for her and everybody constantly took care of her and made sure that um, we were there for her. And so now here we are 12 years later after my grandfather passed away and in 2012 was our first YouTube video. YouTube has been very instrumental in my abuela's growth even at her age she's 80 now and at 80 years old I wish I could be in the position that she is today uh, still making a difference in the community and the people she meets and she still continues moving she still continues to carry a smile and she still continues to make a difference so happy birthday abuela and thank you to all of you for listening watching and subscribing. God bless you.